close. Down to the wire? You have two seconds to get it out. No way. Oh, you lost. <laughs> Felix, you gotta move, kitty. There you go, thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have the first cookie out of What's For Dessert that I'm gonna show you. It's my CD whole wheat chocolate chip cookie and this was inspired by this chocolate chip cookie that Harris kept making. It's so flavorful and the whole thing is made in a skillet. So you just need one bowl. Everything comes together so fast and it's ready in under 45 minutes. What time is it now? Oh God, you're gonna hold me to that? 2.38. All right, 45 minutes. No, don't, no, don't start yet. No, don't start the clock yet. I love, 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 obsessed with the chocolate chip cookie and dessert person. I don't think it can be beat. Okay, it's still really hot. I probably should have waited, but I can't. Mm, this is a good cookie. It's a superlative chocolate chip cookie. My forever chocolate chip cookie, but it is time consuming. You have to let the dough sit and rest overnight and then bake. So really the inspiration besides Harris's chocolate chip cookie was having it be done really, really quickly. And that's what you get in a skillet cookie. So the whole thing bakes together. There's no forming, there's no baking in batches. It's like one and done. Very, very straightforward ingredients. Five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate that I chopped. It actually was already in chips, but I chopped it up because I like the texture, but use the stuff from a bar or a block, that's great. Whole wheat flour, 100% whole wheat. One large egg, a stick of butter plus a half tablespoon. Then some kosher salt, flaky salt for finishing, that's optional, but I like using it. Baking soda. Then I have here a tablespoon of chia seeds and a tablespoon of poppy seed. You could use two tablespoons of one, you know, if you only wanna use one. Then here I have two tablespoons sunflower seeds, two tablespoons pumpkin seeds, and one tablespoon of sesame seeds. Light brown sugar, granulated sugar, and vanilla extract. Special equipment. So you'll need for this basically just a 12 inch skillet. So I have a cast iron here. It doesn't matter if it's cast iron or carbon steel or stainless steel, as long as it's a 12 inch skillet, and then a media bowl and whisk, and that's all you need. Do you think I'm cheating because I already have the meats ready? No. Under 45 minutes, when you already have the ingredients <laughs> measured out. Okay, so I'm preheating my skillet, dry skillet, nothing in it, and I'm on like medium high. I wanna add my raw seeds. So I'm only gonna toast the pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and sesame seeds. The chia and poppy don't really benefit from being toasted, so I'm gonna leave those out. And I'm gonna toast these just for a few minutes until they get golden brown and fragrant. Okay, so keep these moving, because they will burn if you leave them alone. And that doesn't scratch the induction there? Look, there's gonna be scratches no matter what. <laughs> it, yeah. What? It makes me uncomfortable. Why, is it scratching? All right. But like, you gotta live your life. Okay. You know? Preach. This step takes under five. I've allotted five minutes for this step. When you're toasting pumpkin seeds, they'll start to pop, so that's a good indicator. So these are done. I'm gonna take these off the heat and transfer these into a medium bowl. So those seeds go into the bowl, and to those I'm going to add my chia and poppy seeds. Again, this is two tablespoons total. If you wanna use one or the other, that's fine, but a mix is nice, so I'm gonna add those. And now I'm going to add my whole wheat flour. So basically what I'm doing is making a mix of all the dry ingredients. So go ahead and whisk all of that together. And then my quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Archie, don't knock that over. Set that aside. Now I'm going to return the skillet to the burner. Now I'm going to add my one stick of butter. The skillet's already hot, so this is gonna melt and sizzle really quickly. Browning the butter adds so much flavor, and also it's like we're already in a skillet. You might as well take that step. So I'm gonna turn off the heat a little bit. And even working in a dark colored skillet like this, you should still be able to see the browning take place. So I'm looking for those little specks of milk solids to get like super golden and, and caramelized and toasty smelling, and it shouldn't take too long. When you're working with just a stick of butter in a nice big skillet like this, it goes pretty fast. Oh, you know what? My one egg is supposed to be beaten. I'm gonna go ahead and beat that egg. Now I'm really multitasking because I forgot this. I'm adding one teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt to the dry mix. If you're using Morton, use half that. So that goes in. 
So once the, a lot of the sputtering subsides and you're starting to just see like fine foam, that's when you'll notice the browning. I can also smell it. Now I have golden brown specks and I'm going to remove the skillet from the heat. So just slide it to a cool, and I turn it off, but I'm gonna slide it to a cool area. And now I'm gonna continue to stir until those milk solids are like a deep coppery brown. So I pull them off when they're just kind of, you know, medium or light golden because they'll continue to cook. So I'm gonna kind of keep monitoring those. If you were to leave it in the skillet, there's a very good chance that it would burn. So what I do at this stage is I actually throw in an ice cube. This is going to cool down the butter, which is an important step. And it's also going to add back in some of the water that cooked off when I browned the butter. This is a hot pan and I'm putting water into fat. So it's gonna bubble around. So now this is cooling off. And also because I'm aware that I'm working in cast iron and I don't want to use metal utensils, I'm gonna basically use the spatula the whole time. So the ice cube is fully melted. I'm now going to add my sugars. I have a half cup of light brown sugar and a quarter cup of white sugar. I always like a mix of white and brown sugar in my chocolate chip cookies because they promote different textures and I always want like a multi-textured chocolate chip cookie. So brown sugar will help give you chewiness, white sugar will help give you crispiness and it's like I always want a chocolate chip cookie that is crispy around the edges and chewy in the center. I wanna stir this until the butter and the sugars are really well incorporated, until it's sort of one homogenous texture. And again, I'm off the heat, I'm not on any burner. If you want to, you could just move this to like the countertop if you don't wanna work on the stovetop. And ice cubes are vigorously Okay, so the recipe does say to set the skill to side until the bottom is cool, but I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and say that so that happened. I did kind of jump the gun a little bit. Ideally, you should let the butter cool a little bit before you add the sugar, but I didn't do that. Here's the real issue. You do not wanna add egg to a really, really hot skillet because you do not wanna cook the egg. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this just until the mixture has cooled and I can like comfortably touch the bottom of the pan, which I can almost do, but it's still a little bit warm. So I have my vanilla extract, which I'm just gonna add to the egg. And that's the next step is to add my egg. So it's been like 14 or 15 minutes at this point? Maybe. <laughs> okay. That means I still have a solid 10 to 15 to get it in the oven. So I'm not so worried. More like 10. But it also has to cool and you cut and eat it. No, the, no I think the rule is that it has to come out of the oven by that point, Cal. Yeah, it has to be that looks like snow in New York City after. <laughs> so actually, you can see as it's cooled a little bit, I have a, a much more homogenous butter and sugar mixture. So ideally, it looks less shiny and a little more like satiny. And if I had waited for the butter to cool a little more, I think I would have gotten to that point sooner. I'm going to go ahead and add the egg because I know that it's not so hot that it's going to cook it. And I'm just going to thoroughly stir this in and blend it with that butter and sugar mixture, like so. Let's see how it's gotten nice and thick. Okay, now I'm going to add my mix of dry ingredients. We're already in the home stretch. This goes straight in, and I'm gonna fold it with the spatula until it comes together into a smooth dough. So really get around the sides. I guess I've made a slight modification because I <laughs> proceeded with the skill, it's still pretty hot. At this stage, I would stir the chocolate into the dough in the skillet, but it's pretty warm. I'm gonna get it into this bowl and then stir the chocolate in because I think if I were to put it into the skillet at this stage, it would really like melt quite a bit. Oh my God, it's so, I can barely lift the skillet, it's so heavy. Oh my God. So I've reserved the medium bowl that I used to mix the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna get everything back into there. Now I'm gonna give the skillet a quick rinse. I'm not gonna wash it. I'm really just gonna rinse it to remove any traces of the batter. And back over here. So I'm ready to fold in my five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. So in that sort of still warm batter, some of the chocolate pieces, and this is why I've chopped it, is because I want some like really little dusty bits of chocolate to melt into the batter. If you wanted to add nuts to this, you could. You could add like pistachios or pecans. That would be really good. How long did you say that it would be for? Like 16 or 22 minutes. Is it gonna be close? So I have my clean skillet, again, not washed, but just rinsed to remove any batter or like, you know, floury areas. And I have it on very, very low heat. And all I wanna do is melt a half tablespoon of butter. So this is all I have left. And I, this is just to grease the pan. I was having some issues with some sticking and I didn't wanna to have to like line the skillet with parchment paper because that just defeats the purpose of doing this whole thing in a skillet. 
So I found that the easiest method was just to give it a quick rinse, get the dough out of it briefly, and add a little extra butter. Is it important to get the sides as well? No, not really. You can always cut around the sides. You just want the butter to be melted across the bottom. So once that butter is melted, which it nearly is, I'm gonna scrape the cookie dough back into the skillet. Oh my God, thanks. <laughs> give, me that, give me that. <laughs> you know too much at this point. So now you can use that same spatula. I like to use my offset spatula. This is going to just get smoothed into the bottom all the way to the edges. What are we at now? <gasps> okay, finishing touch is just some flaky salt on top. Always a nice touch for chocolate chip cookies. So this will bake until the surface, it'll get a little wrinkly, it'll get matte and set, and I wanna go until it is firm around the edge and still a little bit soft in the center. So 16 to 22 minutes. Oh boy, better take 19 minutes or less. It's been in for 15. I just want to see how it's doing. Oh my God, guys, I think we might be done. Oh no, oh no, she's not done at all. More time. Okay, so how much time left? You have five minutes left. We'll set it for four. I don't think it's gonna be done in that amount of time. Hello? Hello? I think, I could hear people in the background, but I don't think they meant to call me. Oh my God, okay, let's check. So we're nice and golden around the edges. No, it needs more time. Kitty, Kitty, I failed. It needs like, it needs more time. How much time do I have? 30 seconds. Well, <laughs> tell me when it goes off and I'm falling out. Ding. Time's up. I hope that it's done. Let's see. I mean, it kind of looks done. Wah. So I pulled the cookie out of the oven, whether it was done or not. I like how the surface has like lightly cracked. I can tell that it's nice and set around the edge where it's a little bit darker. And the center <laughs> feels too soft. But <laughs> probably could have gone longer. The point is, it's in the spirit of being a 45 minute recipe from start to finish. But we wanna let it cool, so we're gonna come back and cut it and taste it. If you were like in more of a hurry, you could just let this rest for, I would say five or 10 minutes, put it in the middle of the table and people could seriously just like take it with a spoon and then you'll have a little bit of like a gooier, kind of melty cookie situation, but I'm gonna let it cool. You can make it in advance and then just stick this whole thing back in the oven and reheat it that way. So you don't have to like always serve it straight out of the oven. You can definitely make it ahead. So I'm gonna go in with my wheel cutter like a pizza. The first one is a little bit of a sacrificial cookie just to lift it out. So I'm gonna lift one out and then take another one. Is this a brownie? It's not a brownie, Cal. It's a cookie. Why, it looks like a brownie to you? It kind of looks like a brownie because, you know, some of the chocolate melts into the batter, so it, it darkens the batter a little bit. Why does it look like a brownie to you, Cal? I'm gonna just look at it. <laughs> Why does it look that dark on camera? This is a cookie. I promise. That's kind of falling apart. Mm. That's not a brownie. But it's a really good chocolate cookie. Oh, it's just really good. The right? The things inside with the texture. Mm hmm The seeds. Mm hmm Crunchy. I know. It's a very good brownie. <laughs> LOL. Okay. Mm, I love how chewy it is. I love the texture of the seeds. I love the salt between the brown butter and the vanilla and the brown sugar. It has like a, a really kind of butterscotchy flavor going on, which I really like, which is why it's not a brownie. Such a good chair dessert. Mm, forgot about my milk. So good. This is the one and only skillet cookie in the book, but I have a whole chapter of other bars and cookies and also candied things. We'll bring you more cookies. It'll be really fun. So do you think I did it under 45 minutes? No. <laughs> it had to cool? Yeah. Let us know in the comments if you think that was a legit claim. Which now I'm feeling it's not because like I did have all the ingredients measured out. It's okay. You tried. I tried. I think it was close. Under 46 minutes. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really enjoying this cookie. Can't believe you think it's a brownie. <laughs>